Hello and welcome back to English Today. This is the second DVD of the beginner level and in this DVD you will see three more episodes of our story, That's Life. And then in our special TV programs there will be a debate about low-cost airlines and an interview with a sports expert about football training. Then, in the grammar section, we will study the simple present, frequency adverbs, some and any, there is, there are, and also making suggestions. Now remember, if you have problems understanding anything, use the subtitles, okay? So, enjoy studying and have fun. Hello, Anne. Oh, it's you, Peter. Look, this is it. Look at what? My office. Here, near my bed. Oh, I see. By the way, where are the office supplies? The computer supplies are in that cupboard over there. The folders, pencils, pens, etc. are here in this cupboard. And I also have two chairs. Oh, good. Are these for everyone? No, they are not. Don't touch anything, please. Okay, so you say you have all of the office supplies. No, not really. Um, there isn't a fax machine. There aren't all the programs I need on my computer. And I guess you have an answering machine. Is it useful? I don't need an answering machine. I answer the telephone myself. Okay, you're right. This office is nice. And if you need a fax machine, I have one in my apartment. Oh, thank you. Wait a minute. Something is missing. Where's the coffee machine? All offices have a coffee machine. I'm afraid there isn't one here. There's a staff kitchen on the other side of the house. In the kitchen. <laughs> we can have some coffee there. Good idea. Hello and welcome back to English Today. How are you? Now, in that last episode of That's Life, did you notice that Anne described her office? And the most important thing for Peter was what? The coffee machine. Strange. Now, I want to look at the language that Anne used. She used there is a and there are some. Let me explain that to you. Now, if you have a single object, for example, like a glass, then we say there is a glass on the table or there is a hat on the table or there is a computer on the table. OK, now that changes when we have more than one object, like these pens, for example. We say there are some pens on the table, okay? There are some pens on the table. And therefore, in this example here, books, there are some books on the table. There are some CDs on the table. So you see, how it changes. Now, let's go and look at that on the screen. You can see it written. So, we said with singular objects, we say there is. The examples are there's a computer in Anne's office. There isn't a fax machine. That's the negative. There isn't a fax machine. There's a table in the studio and there isn't a coffee machine, which Peter can't believe. Now look at the plural form. We say there are some office supplies in the office and there are some pens and pencils, okay? And we also use that for the exact number of plural objects. So, for example, there are two chairs in Anne's office and there are four pictures, for example, in her studio. 
All right, so that's an introduction to there is and there are some. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to look at the difference between some and any, which is very important. So listen out for that in the next episode and then come back here and we'll work on it. All right, see you later. Bye. Do you want milk with your coffee? There's a bottle in the back of the fridge. I prefer it without milk, but with some sugar. Oh, I'm afraid there isn't any sugar. Well, that's okay. Black coffee is good too. Do you have any of those great cookies? Oh, yes. There are some cookies over here. <laughs> Peter speaking. What? An audition? No, not at all. I'm free. Great. Bye. Well, finally. An audition. Wonderful. When? Next Monday at the Opera Theater. These cookies are fantastic. Are there any more? There are some more in the box. Thank you. Bye, Anne. Time for music. <laughs> hey! Take your dirty napkin away from my kitchen! Mm! <sighs> it's nice to have you as my new office neighbour. Hi again. Anne's a bit difficult, isn't she? Yeah. Now this is a lesson about some and any. Remember Peter said, can I have some coffee and some biscuits? Well, I want to talk to you about that right now. Now, in order to understand some and any, we have to understand the difference between countable objects and uncountable objects. So, these things here are ingredients to make a wonderful English lemon cake. Let's divide them into countable objects and uncountable objects. Let's start with these. Now, these are lemons. Countable means you can count them. Uncountable means you can't count them. Can you count these? Yeah, one, two. So, these are countable, so there are some lemons. Now, what about these? These are nuts. Can you count these? Yeah, one, two, three, etc. So they are also countable. So we say there are some nuts on the table. Now, what about this? This is marmalade. Now, can you count? marmalade. Well, you can count the container, but not the marmalade inside. So this is uncountable. And we say in English, there is some, there is some marmalade. It's a singular verb. So we put it here. It's uncountable. Okay. Now let's look at this. What's this? This is salt, salt. Now, is this countable or uncountable for you? Countable or uncountable? Well, it is very difficult to count all the little bits of salt. So this is uncountable. We put it here, all right? Now, next thing, these two, eggs. Countable, uncountable, one, two, countable. There are some eggs. This here is spices, spices. Now these you can count. So we say there are some spices. What about this, milk? You can count the bottle, but can you count the liquid? No. So all liquids are uncountable and we say there is some milk. There 
is some milk, so singular, singular verb. Put that there. Now, what have we got here? Butter, butter. Can we count that? Well, we can count a packet, yes, but the butter inside? Exactly, no, we can't count butter. So there is some butter, we put it here. Good. Now, what else have we got? Flour. You know, flour, flour we use to make pizza, to make cakes. Is that countable? Exactly. It's not countable. It's like salt, like sugar, like coffee. So we put this here, uncountable. And the last thing, this. What's this? Water. Is water countable? No, it's not. So water goes with the uncountable, there is some water. It's quite difficult, hey? Let's look at the screen to see that written, all right? And we will do a general summary. So we said countable objects in the plural. In the positive form, we say, there are some lemons on the table. There are some CDs on the table. There are some eggs on the table, so that's countable. Now the negative is, there aren't any, we use any, there aren't any cigarettes on the table. There aren't any biscuits, important, any for the negative. There aren't any magazines, for example, all right? Now questions, here again, we use the word any, we use any in the negative and any in the questions. So, are there any glasses on the table? Are there any books on the table? Are there any pens? All right, so some in the positive, any in the negative and the question form. Good. Now, let's move on to uncountable objects. These ones here, the examples are there is, singular verb, some sugar on the table. There is some flour on the table. There is some water on the table. Okay, negative. Again, we use any. We say there isn't any bread on the table. There isn't any wine, a liquid, on the table. There isn't any chocolate on the table, all right? Questions, again, with the singular verb and any. Is there any money on the table? Is there any pasta? Unfortunately not. And is there any beer, okay? Now, I want to add one more thing to this lesson, and it's the words this, that, these, those. Let me explain. With one object, you say this CD when it's close to you, this CD. But when it's distant from you, far away, you say that CD, this, that. All right, we hear this very often. Let me take two, plural. Now we say these CDs, when they're far from you, we say those CDs, okay? So these, those, one, this, that. Let's see that on the screen. So this book, plural, these books, when they're close to you, and that chair, for example, and those chairs when they're distant from you. That's a big lesson, hey? There's a lot to remember. So we have some and any, countable and uncountable, this, that, these, those. Whew, you have a lot to do at home to study there. Anyway, no problem, because you're great students. So. We'll meet again in the studio very soon for some more English. Take care. Bye for now. Yes, <laughs> I always go shopping on Saturdays. 
The first thing I do on Saturday is drive to the supermarket. I sometimes go shopping on Saturdays, but usually I sleep late. I'm always so tired on Saturdays. I'm never tired on the weekend. The weekend is a time for fun. I paint, go jogging, go out with some friends. Unfortunately, I sometimes have to study. Oh, I sometimes do a little work at the weekend. When I'm free, I like going swimming, going to exhibitions or to concerts, if I have enough money. Oh, and every Sunday, I clean up the entire flat. And in the evening, I watch TV. Oh, I never watch TV. It's boring. Peter and I like going to the cinema at the weekend. Yes, it's important not to watch too much TV. An hour a day or so, that's enough. Come on, guys. You talk like my grandfather. Work, TV, housework on the weekends. Life is more. I want you to take me to places where young people have fun. Great. Get ready, Grandpa. Hello and welcome back again to English Today, your live English language program. Now, did you notice how Anne said that she loves going to concerts and exhibitions, but she doesn't have enough money? Now, this word, enough, enough, it's written E-N-O-U-G-H. The pronunciation is enough. What does it mean? Let me show you. I have a ticket here for a concert, okay? This is 45 euro, 45 euro. Now I have 40 euro here, 40 euro, 45 euro for the ticket. <laughs> it isn't enough. It means it's less, it's not sufficient. It isn't enough, no ticket, no concert. Hmm. So, and, uh, happens. Like Anne, poor Anne, not enough money. Now, another example, you ask me, can I have a glass of water? And I say, sure. So, here you are. You say, what? Excuse me, it's not enough. Not enough, it's not sufficient. Oh, I say, okay, fine. So, glass of water, here we go. <coughs> Mm. And you say, oh, oh, it's too much, too much. Now, that is the opposite. When something is in excess, it's too much. Let's go back to the ticket. For example, imagine that the theatre ticket has a discount. Now it only costs 30 euro, 30 euro. I've got 40 euro, which is too much in excess, too much, but that's great. That's not a problem. That's great, I can go to the concert, okay? So that's enough, too much. Now, one more word, it's a small word and it's so. When do we use so? Uh, if I say to you, you are so intelligent, that describes an emphasis. You are so intelligent. You could also say, the glass is so full, okay? So, so is to express um, an emphasis of something. So, we've studied enough, too much, and so. Let's look at those on the screen now to help you, okay? Enough, pronunciation, enough, when something isn't sufficient. There isn't enough water in the glass. There isn't enough money. Then we can also use it with an adjective. The glass isn't full enough. After an adjective, it isn't full enough. 
let's move on to two when we talk about something in excess. So, there's too much water in the glass. There's too much money. Great. There are too many coins. Now, many is because we use it with countable things. There are too many coins. We can use it with an adjective. For example, the ticket is too expensive. The glass is too full. All right? Then the last thing was so, when you want to emphasize something, the ticket is so expensive. Uh, the glass is so full. Or you are so intelligent. Fantastic. So that's the end of this lesson. Remember, enough, too, too much or too many, and so. That's it for now, and I'm going to see you again extremely soon. Take care. Bye. Work is so hard, guys. I wake up at 6.30 every day, have breakfast, and take the train to work. Every day. I know. I get up at 7. But I have a friend at work who usually gets up at six. Why? That's too early. It takes him an hour to drive to work. Wow, that's a long drive. Yes, but he lives in the country. I think he's lucky. Every weekend he can go for walks in the woods, not in traffic jams. I guess that's pretty nice. He lives in the countryside, but works in the city. A pretty nice combination. What about you, Sharon? What time do you wake up? I usually get up at about 9 o'clock. But I live in the city. It's easy to get to work. Yes, but you get home very late. Often 6.30 or 7. You know, I sometimes have five or six groups of tourists a day. You work too much, my dear. And you sing too much, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Hello again, and how are you? Now, from that last conversation, we learned that Sharon works too much and Peter sings too much. How about you? Do you work too much? What time do you get up in the morning? 6.45? 7 o'clock? 7.15? 7.30? Well, I'm going to describe my typical day and I'm going to use the simple present to do that. All right? Well, first, I wake up at 6.45, but I don't get up. I listen to the radio and I listen to the news. Then after I slowly get up, that's difficult, and I take a shower. I take a shower. I get dressed and then I go for a walk with Suki. Then we have breakfast together. She has dog biscuits and I have toast, marmalade and butter. Then I go to work on my scooter. Now my boyfriend has a different day because he goes to work at eight o'clock at night. Remember, he's a jazz musician. Now, did you notice I said he goes to work? That's because with the third person, we add an S, goes. He goes to work at eight o'clock and he comes home at three o'clock in the morning because he plays jazz concerts. Then he goes to bed and he gets up at lunchtime at one o'clock. So we meet at dinner, which is 
you know, we don't have much time together, but that's life. Now that was the simple present tense, and now we're going to see that on the screen. Very, very important, this grammatical form. So, I work, you work, he, she, it works, she works, it works, we work, you work, they work. Now, very often you forget to put the S on the third person, so I have another teaching assistant who will help you to remember, Mr. Snakes. He is here to help you remember to put the S on the third person, so listen. I work at home, you work every day, he works. Uh, at night, she works in an office, it works all week, we work together, you work full time, they work at weekends. So remember, it's not difficult, the simple present in English. I work, you work, he works, she works, it works. Don't forget, Mr. Snake, don't forget the S, the third person. All right? Good. Now, listen to the next episode and try and uh, pick out words like often, sometimes, occasionally, because we're going to study those next. All right? Go and have some fun. Bye. <clears throat> Alice, I bet you don't wake up at 6 o'clock every day. Tell us something about your typical day at university. Well, I sometimes have classes in the morning, but I usually have classes in the afternoon. On Mondays, I always attend lectures in the morning. And where do you study? I usually study in the library, but I sometimes study at home too, when I don't have classes in the morning. My friend David also studies at your university. Do you remember him? David Leary? Yes, I occasionally see him in the library, and sometimes in the park. In the park? Doing what? He likes studying there. He takes his books, finds a nice park bench, and reads there. Not a bad idea. You can study and enjoy nature at the same time. Yes, I like the park too. Unfortunately, I often need books that are in the library. And what about lunch? Do you usually make sandwiches and take them with you? <laughs> oh, no. I hate cooking. I usually have lunch in the cafeteria with friends. Oh, I do just the opposite. I usually cook lunch at home. I seldom have a quick lunch at coffee shops. OK, guys. Stop with this boring talk. What about fun? Do any of you do anything besides working and studying? It's Friday, remember? You're right, Jack. I'm so happy it's Friday. Me too. It's weekend time. <laughs> time for shopping. Jack really knows how to provoke Anne, doesn't he? Hmm. Did you notice those words? Sometimes, always, occasionally? Because we're going to study those now. And in English, they're called the frequency adverbs. And we usually use them with the simple present tense. And they describe how many times you do actions. Frequency adverbs. Now, to help me introduce them, I have another teaching assistant. This is -da, Mr. Dinosaur. Mr. Dinosaur is here to help you with the frequency adverbs. Dinosaur, D-I-N-O-S-A-U-R. Now, let's see at the screen how Mr. Dinosaur is going to help you.
Well, look at the screen. Now, we're talking about adverbs of frequency, things which describe how often you do something, like habitual actions. Dinosaur. Look at the screen. We have D-I-N-O-S-A-U-R. Now, these letters represent a frequency adverb. Let's see if you can find them. What do you think O is? When you do something a lot. Yeah, often. O is often. What about N? When you do... N is never. Good. N is never. Uh, what about A? Something that you do a lot. A is always good. What about S? S is sometimes. Very good, sometimes. Now, U, U is for usually. Usually, it's a habit. What about R? R stands for rarely. That's difficult to pronounce. Rarely. And the last one, look at the top. We've got D. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is a bit strange this. Every day. All right, so those are the main frequency adverbs. Every day, never, often, sometimes, always, usually, rarely. You notice sometimes is also the same as occasionally. And rarely, another way to say rarely is seldom. Okay, now, the important thing about Mr. Dinosaur and the frequency adverbs is where to put them in the sentence. Now, look at the examples. We put them in front of the main verb. So, I never go out. You always arrive late. He usually gets up at seven. She rarely plays tennis. It often rains in England. We sometimes watch TV. You occasionally drink wine. And the last one is different. Every day they drive to work. Usually every day we put at the beginning. But the others are always before the main verb and after the subject. Now, one problem. There is an exception to the rule, which is typical of the English language. And what is the exception? The exception is the verb to be. The verb to be is always an exception in English. Let's see how that works. Look at the example. He isn't often late. We are sometimes in a hurry. You see the position. The position of the frequency adverb is after the verb to be, not before. And that's the rule. So he isn't often late. We're sometimes in a hurry. They're never at home. And I'm always tired. So those are the frequency adverbs, very important, and we use them to describe our habitual actions. Now, in the next episode of That's Life, listen for this word, enough. Enough. It's a very strange word because we're going to talk about that in the next lesson here in the studio. So, go and see That's Life. Bye. May I ask you a question, Alice? Sure. Ask any question you like. I'm an open book. Do you have a boyfriend? Well, I go out with some boys, but that's nothing serious. According to my birth chart, I need some taurines, but that's not easy now that Saturn is in Leo. I see. Anyway, I think you have a strange relationship with boys. Oh, no. I like...
like boys very much. They're great at carrying packages. You're exceptional. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. But now, stop talking about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think of me? No, really. I'm curious. What do you do at work? Oh, nothing special. Uh, you know Speedmaster, the sporting goods factory? Yeah, sure. They produce wonderful running shoes. What department do you work in? I'm a sales manager. Last month they gave me a promotion and now I am responsible for Southern Europe. That's why I moved here. Wow, that's really interesting. You must be very good at work. What exactly do you do? Oh, basically I look for new clients and keep them informed about new product lines and take care of their requests. What kind of requests do they have? Oh, they often ask questions about new models and prices. What do you do if they want a discount? <laughs> Well, basically, I don't get mad. Uh, I listen to them and then I tell them no. <laughs> well, seriously speaking, it depends. Each client is different. If they're important, I try to make an agreement with them. Hi, Anne. Hi, Sharon. Where's Peter? Oh, Peter's preparing his audition. Well, tell Peter I wish him good luck. Do you really care? Hello and welcome back to English Today for some more live English. Now, Jack, does he really care for Sharon? I think he does. Let's ask Mr Monkey. Mr Monkey, does Jack really care for Sharon? Mr Monkey. Yes, yes, he agrees, he agrees, he cares. Now. In that episode, there were a lot of questions, and I want to practice that with you now. And to do that, we are going to have a quiz. I am going to change profession. I am no longer an English teacher. I have a different job. I will ask 10 questions. I will give the answers, and you must guess my new job. Now, if you guess it correctly, I will play a flight for you to go to London for a romantic weekend. How about that? Flight to London? So, ten questions. Listen carefully. Number one. Do I work in an office? No, I don't. Number two. Do I work outside? Well, yes, actually, I do sometimes work outside. Next, uh, do I have special qualifications? Oh, yes, I have special qualifications for my job. Okay, next one. Um, do I work at weekends? Yes, I do, actually. Most weekends I work. So, I don't work in an office. I work outside sometimes, I have special qualifications, and I work at weekends. Okay, next one. Mm. Do you travel a lot? Oh yes, I travel everywhere. I travel to America, to the Far East, around Europe, a lot. Do you earn a lot of money? Oh yes, I earn a lot of money. <laughs> Next question, do you use your hands when you work? Yes, I do. I use my hands and I also use my feet. Very important. Next one, do you work with other people? Yes, that's very important. I work with other people. All right, next one. Do you use music in your job? Music? Yes, now music is very important for me, music. And the last question, do you wear special clothes? Well, yes, for my job, I have special clothes, I have special shoes, particular shoes, and I do my hair in a special way. So I use my hands and my feet. I work with other people, 
I use music, I earn a lot of money, I wear special clothes, and I travel a lot. So what's my job? Hmm? No. 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 It's difficult. Shall I tell you? I'm a prima ballerina. I won, you lost. No London, no flight to London. Next time, there'll be another quiz. All right, good. So let's look at the grammar that we've just used for asking questions, okay? Now, we have the question form with the question word like when, the auxiliary, do, I, the subject, and then arrive, which is the verb. So, when do I arrive? Okay, that's a typical question in the simple present. Look at the next one. What do you do at work? What do you do? Next one. Now, this is important and we need Mr. Snake because it's who does he work with? Remember, does. Third person, the S, do becomes does. So, who does he work with? Next one. Why does she study? Third person. How much does it cost? Again, third person, it. When do we leave? Where do we live? And how do they speak English? Okay, so remember, third person does is the auxiliary plus the infinitive. All right, so those are the English question forms. Now, in the next episode, listen out for the negative form and then we'll study that together, okay? So, have fun studying and I'll see you again very soon. Bye. Oh, girls, we're talking about jobs. Tell me about your job, Sharon. What do you do at the moment? Ah, uh, that's an interesting question. Really? Why do you say that? Well, you know I have a degree in archaeology, but now I'm doing something quite different. Do you have a part-time job? No, unfortunately, it's a full-time job. I work for a travel agency. Oh, what do you do? I give tours around the city. I bring tourists to monuments and museums and other interesting places. Oh, that's nice. Could I have you as a tour guide for one day? I'm sorry. I only work with groups, usually with Japanese people. Oh, well, I'm a black belt in karate. Very funny, but it's not enough. It's too bad. Anne, stop cleaning for a moment. Sit down and tell me about your job. Okay, 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 okay. I work in a publishing company. Oh, so you work with famous writers? Uh, not exactly. Um, I don't work with the writers. I just read their proofs and correct them before printing. Ah, by the way, do you know Paul Taylor? Mm. He works with you, right? Yes, yeah, but we don't work in the same department. He works in the advertising department. But we are good friends. Every weekend we play tennis together. I play tennis? Mm. I'm jealous. Do you play tennis too? Do you want to play with us? Well, just joking. I don't play tennis that well. Only karate. <laughs> Jack, I don't play tennis very well. I only do karate. He doesn't play tennis very well. It's easy. Men. Now, anyway, it was a good example of the negative of the simple present tense. I don't play tennis very well. Now, I'm going to tell you my typical day again, but in the negative and listen to the grammatical form, okay? I don't wake up at 6.45. I don't get up after. I don't listen to the radio. Now, don't is do not, do not abbreviated, okay? I don't take a shower. I don't have breakfast with Suki and I don't have
talk biscuits. Now think of my boyfriend. Let's go into the third person. My boyfriend doesn't go to work at eight o'clock at night. He doesn't play the saxophone. He plays the double bass. Now, doesn't is does not contracted. Doesn't, okay? Plus the infinitive. So he doesn't play, let's say, at one o'clock in the morning. He doesn't come home at seven o'clock in the evening. So you see, these are examples of the negative form. And now we need to go and look at the screen because we need to see how that works in comparison to the positive form. All right, great. Now, look at the examples. I don't teach on Sundays. Do not becomes don't. I don't teach on Sundays. You don't know my parents. Jack doesn't, does not. Jack doesn't play tennis well. Alice doesn't have a boyfriend. The house doesn't belong to Anne. Third person, doesn't. We don't work part-time. You don't know Anne's aunt. And Alice and Sharon don't live together. All right, so now we have studied the positive form, the question form, and the negative form of the present tense. So a whole world opens up for you, okay? Well, you just keep studying and we'll meet again here for another live show very soon. All right, take care, bye. Good evening from Eric Brown. Welcome to another edition of Let's Talk. With me here in the studio are Marie and Tom. Hello, Marie. Hello, Tom. Hello, Hello Eric. Eric. Well, today, let's talk. Let's talk about... About what, Marie? Low-cost airlines. Very interesting. You're right, Eric. You know, there are 90 low-cost airlines in Europe today. Really? So many? Yes, that's right. 90. Lots of people fly with low-cost airlines. Of course. It's very cheap to fly with these airlines. It's not always cheap, Marie. It's cheap to fly midweek on Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday, but it's not cheap to fly at weekends on Saturday or Sunday. Hmm. But are the planes safe? Yes, the planes are usually new, hmm. so they are safe. Oh, that's good. It's important to fly in safe planes. And what about the tickets? Is it easy to find them? Yes, it's very easy. Hmm. I usually buy my tickets online with my credit card. Well, I travel a lot. <laughs> really? You're a real expert on low-cost airlines, Marie, aren't you? Yes, I am. My boyfriend lives in Berlin. Oh, and how often do you visit him? I go to see him twice a month. Oh, I see, I see. And are the flights on time? Yes, they're usually on time. Hmm. I leave work at 5.30 in the afternoon and arrive at the airport at 6. Perfect for the check-in. That's very convenient. You're lucky, Marie. Usually, low-cost flights leave from airports a long way from the city. What time is your flight? At 7 o'clock. You're really lucky, Marie. Usually, low-cost flights leave late at night or early in the morning when it's not convenient. Yes, that's true. And yes, I am very lucky. Um, is there any food on the plane? Yes. Passengers buy drinks and snacks. Remember, the drinks and snacks aren't free. You have to pay f even for a glass of water. That's true, but it doesn't matter. I arrive in Berlin at 8.30, just in time for a pizza with my boyfriend at Bella Napoli. <laughs> a very good <laughs> pizzeria, the oh. best one in Berlin. Oh, that's great, but for us, it's time to say goodbye. OK, low-cost airlines. Today, there are many low-cost airlines throughout Europe. They are very easy to use, and they are cheap. And the planes are safe, and they are usually on time. Very interesting, very, very interesting. 
Thank you, Marie. Thank you. And thank you, Tom. Thank you. And goodbye. And see you again soon on another edition of Let's Talk. Well, low-cost airlines really make traveling easy. For many people, flying is very simple, like taking a bus. Now let's take a look at some very useful vocabulary and expressions you just heard. The check-in is the place where you show your passport and leave your luggage. In English, it is also a verb. We say, I check in at seven, or where's the check-in for Berlin? When we talk about cheap prices, we mean it doesn't cost very much, and expensive means it costs a lot. My ticket to Berlin is 600 euros. It's expensive. Your ticket is 100 euros. It's cheap. Her ticket is 30 euros. That's very cheap. To say what airline we use, we say fly with, followed by the name of the airline. I fly with Air Liverpool, or the type of airline. I fly with low-cost airlines. And what about when you want to ask if the plane is late? We can say, are the flights on time? If the flight is at 7 and it goes at 7, it is on time. But if the flight is at 7 and it goes at 10, it's late. Marie said, I buy my tickets online. This means she uses the internet to buy her ticket. What other things can you do online? Here are some examples. I reserve hotel rooms online. I don't call the hotel on the phone to reserve a room. I use the internet. I check my bank account online. I use the internet to see how much money I have in my account. I pay my bills online. I use the internet to pay the electricity bill, the water bill, the gas bill. Wow. We can really do a lot of things online. OK, just two more things before we say goodbye. The first is frequency. When we say how often we do something, I asked Marie, how often do you visit him? And she said, twice a month. Twice a month means two times in a month. Once a month means one time in a month. But when we do something more than two times, we say three times a month, four times a month, etc. Even if we change the period of time, the structure of frequency remains the same. For example, we can say once a day, twice a week. But remember, we say three times a year, four times a week. One last thing. Notice the preposition after arrive. When we arrive in a place like a station, airport, shop, we say, I arrive at the airport at 6. But when we arrive in a city or country, we say, I arrive in Berlin at 8.30. So we say, I arrive at the station, I arrive at the airport, but I arrive in London or I arrive in Madrid. That's about it for now. Take care and see you soon. Good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to Sports Special, the program dedicated to all sports and all sports fans. I'm Eric Brown. In the studio with me is John Forbes, our sports expert. Well, John, what are you talking about this afternoon? Football. Great, my favorite sport. It's not only your favorite sport, Eric. Millions of people love football. Of course. It's a fantastic game. The best in the world. Well, maybe. But remember, Eric, football isn't only about fame, success, and money. Oh, a lot of money. Professional football has earned millions of euros. That's true. But football is also about hard work, fitness training, stretching, and jogging almost every day. Really? How often do professional players train? They go jogging every day at 8 in the morning, and then they work out in the gym. Ah, so much exercise. And that's not all. Really? What do you mean? Well, they also practice football three or four times a week with oh. the team. And uh, where do they train? They usually do fitness training at the football ground. First they do stretching, then they practice shooting. Is the coach with them during the training? 
Yes, of course, the coach is very important for the team. He shows the players good techniques for passing, dribbling and heading. And he decides who plays in the matches. Hmm. How many matches are there in a football championship? 30, more or less. You know, football championships take place in the winter, usually from September until June. And when do they play matches? At weekends, but the big clubs also play during the week for the European Cups. Oh, championships, European Cups, training. Footballers are very busy. Yes, they are. The only time they rest is in the summer. Well, holidays only in the summer, but what about fun? For example, can the players have a beer after a match? Of course, Eric, especially if they win. A beer is a perfect way to celebrate a victory. Well, a footballer's training routine is very hard, but it is very rewarding, too. OK, thanks to our expert, John Forbes. And goodbye to all football fans and sports lovers. See you again soon for a new edition of Sports Special. First of all, football and soccer are the same thing. Football is the British word, and soccer is the American form. But they are exactly the same thing. So, let's take a look at some of the vocabulary we use to talk about football. Do you like football? If you do, then you are a football fan. Like me. Do you support a team? I support Inter. We say that we support a team when we are a fan of that team. So, what is a team? It's the group of players that play together. For example, Manchester United is a football team. A person who plays football as a job is called a professional footballer or a professional football player. Footballer and football player are the same thing. A football player is a footballer. And every team has a coach. A coach is the person who prepares the team. He teaches techniques and how to play well. So, 11 football players make a team, and when two teams play against each other, they play a match. But as John told us, footballers don't only play matches, they do a lot of training. Training is all the exercises they do to prepare for matches. We can say, footballers do training, or footballers train. Training is the noun, and train is the verb. And what do they do when they train? John said a few. They work out in the gym. They do stretching. They go jogging. And they practice football skills. John also mentions some of the skills or techniques that footballers practice. Passing, which means to pass or kick the ball to another player. Dribbling, which means to move the ball forward with the ball. Shooting, which means to shoot or kick the ball into the goal, and heading, which means to hit the ball with your head. It's a lot of hard work. I think they definitely deserve a beer when they win. Well, that's all for me for now. Take it easy. See you next time.